put our hands together. That was incredible. Hey, hands up. If you were at ACIT, go ahead and give us a wave. Wasn't that absolutely fantastic gathering as one church, one location, one celebration? It was absolutely fantastic. But listen, don't miss out. We got the night shift happening. Eight, uh, sorry, 5.30 Saturday night. And again, as you heard, you can uh, get two tickets, uh, two season tickets to Storybook Land. And then we'll be back, obviously, on Sunday morning here in this location for our three services. But let's go ahead and pray. We're going to jump into this message, and we're going to dialogue with some of our kids here. So, Lord, we just ask a blessing uh, on this Christmas Eve, that in these next few moments, regardless of our age in this place, that you would speak so clearly to us. And we do ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Everybody said? <laughs> Amen. The title of this uh, short message that I want to share with you is this very question, do you have room? In fact, ask your neighbor, do you have room? Go ahead and ask them, and you might not know them, but do you have room? Come on, give them that awkward, like, I have no idea who you are, but do you have room, you know? And, uh, and if you don't know them, just go say, just say, no, no, I don't know you, no, there ain't no room, no room. If you know them, say there might be a little bit of room. But do you have room? As I was preparing for tonight and, and reading through Luke chapter 2, if you haven't had that opportunity, and specifically as a family, come on, kids, go ahead and ask your parents tomorrow morning, Dad, Mom, please read this with me. Read Luke chapter 2. But in Luke 2 verse 7, I got stuck on this. It said the following. It said, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was, what are those words? There was no guest room available for them. There was no guest room available for them. Now, we know that the Christmas story has changed with culture. And so uh, sometimes the, the, the thought process is that there's no room in the inn. In fact, if you're a kid in this place and you know no room in the inn, go ahead and kind of wave. Is that how, you know, no room in the inn type of a thing, you know? And, and some new translations of the Bible have said it wasn't an inn, it was a guest room because you would have never gone to the city where your family grew up in and stayed in an inn. Okay, you would have gone and stayed in the house. So, for example, our family uh, leaves on Christmas Day. You know, we're the only family that travels on Christmas Day because we do Christmas Eve services. We got to go home. I got to pack tonight in Jesus' name, not forget anything, and then pile through the airport tomorrow and go, get ourselves all the way down to Phoenix so that we can celebrate. Now, imagine I got to Phoenix and, and the in-laws in Phoenix said, hey, sorry, we ain't got no room in the house. You got to go to someone else's house. That, that would be ludicrous. You'd never do that. But, but there was no room in the house. There was no room in the guest house. That's what they were saying to Joseph and Mary because the scripture says there was no guest room available for them. And I thought to myself this very question this evening on Christmas Eve of 2015 that each of us, regardless of our age tonight, I mean, this is great. If you're six years old, the question is, is there room? If, I, if we're in our 20s, do you have room? If we're in our 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s, do I have room for what Jesus is doing within my life? In fact, uh, another translation of the Bible, the complete Jewish Bible, translates it the following. I actually enjoy this translation a little bit better. But the same scripture in Luke chapter 2 verse 7 says, And she gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and laid him down in a feeding trough. She laid him down in a feeding trough because there was no space for them in the living quarters. A little bit more real, a feeding trough where the cows and the goats and the sheep and the chickens had just been feeding. Jesus Christ was placed in this feeding trough. Do you have room? And yet, if we think about this, and we spoke about this on Sunday at ACI 2, in Isaiah 6, 9, 6, there is this scripture. But before we get to that scripture, Isaiah, who was a prophet six to 700 years before Jesus, had given a birth announcement that Jesus was coming. I mean, think about it right now. 
How many of you have had a child in the last year? Can we go ahead? My, my wife had a child in the last year. Anyone else? You've had a child in the last year. You've had a baby in the last year, okay? We've got a few people. You had a baby in the... Someone was like, did I have a baby or I didn't have a baby? Like, I, I'm not too sure about that, you know? But So my wife had a baby in the last year. And, and what do you do after you've had a baby? You, you send out those pretty birth announcements, you know? And everyone's like, ah, oh, the baby's so sweet. You know, you send to the people you've never met in your whole life before. And they say, oh, that baby is so cute and you get all these different positions and most of the time the baby's just like naked you know like naked with like a bow on top I'm like that's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life before why take a picture of a naked baby with a bow on top and send it to all the people type of a thing but Isaiah get this Isaiah had sent one of those birth announcements of Jesus in a feeding trough six to seven hundred years before that before the days of Photoshop, before the days of Shutterfly or Pinterest or whatever you're on these days to make your Christmas announcements, Isaiah stood and he made this prophetic declaration. He said, for unto us a child is born, in Isaiah 9, 6, to us a son is given, and it said this, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called, come on, let's read this together, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and what? Prince of Peace. Imagine that. Imagine that you had the boldness and the audacity at the end of tonight to go home, to get on Shutterfly, and to say, I'm going to send a birth announcement four, five, six, seven hundred years in the future of what's going to happen. Now, I, I know that we're kind of bright folk in this room this evening, but you're not that bright, correct? I mean, you're not that bright. And anyway, what's technology going to look like? I mean, Shutterfly or whatever you're using these days is not even going to be working, okay? But there would be none of us in this room. But yet, Isaiah knew that Jesus was on his way and that he was going to be a game changer. And Isaiah was sending a birth announcement to you and I. And he was simply asking this question, do you have room? Six to seven hundred years before that, the question was being championed, do you have room? Man, I go back and I think in my life, I was eight years old. When we went to this church meeting, just something maybe similar to that, and I was there with my mom and dad. It's before my parents went separate ways, and, and we were in the church meeting, and the pastor was preaching much like this, and I knew that God was telling me to make room in my heart for what he wanted to do. And I remember at eight years old, I asked my dad, and so dads kind of pay attention to this. I asked my dad at eight years old, it was one of the few times he went to church. I said, dad, I feel that I need to go up front and talk to someone at eight years old. It was a tent meeting, if you ever grew up in the tent meeting times. And my dad looked at me and he said, son, he said, we gotta go and we left. But I knew that God was saying, are you willing to make room for me? Isaiah was saying, are we willing to make room for the wonderful counselor, for the mighty God, for the everlasting father, for the prince of peace? The challenge was, think about this. Let's take a moment and think through this. It said wonderful counselor. And yet for me, when I read that, it said the wonderful counselor was born where? In a feeding trough. I mean, imagine you go and speak to your counselor. If you're a teenager in the room, Imagine at high school, middle school, you're going to go speak to your counselor, and where's your counselor? Your counselor's sitting in a feeding trough. You would like be Instagramming it and putting it on Facebook saying, look at what my counselor was doing in their office. Every one of us would go, that, that, that's not a good encounter. That, that's not a good situation. And yet Isaiah is making the birth announcement saying, listen, 700 years before this, that the wonderful counselor is going to be in a feeding trough. That the mighty God, think about this, that the mighty God, that there was no room for him in the guest house. Imagine tomorrow morning, I don't know what your Christmas Day celebrations look like. Maybe you're going to open gifts in the morning and, and then someone's going to start cooking or you're going to go over to this person's house and then you're going to go over to that person's house. And, you know, I spoke to someone today and they said, listen, it's going to start tomorrow and it does not stop until Sunday. I mean, we're going to be visiting people until Sunday. I thought, man, you're going to eat a lot of food in these next few days over here. Uh, but, but the thing about this, imagine wherever and whatever you were doing, at that moment, there was a knock on the door and there was someone asking, is there space in your house? Do you have room? Do you have room for this child that is coming? And, and if, if I was probably dead honest, most of us would go, hey, I'm a little busy. I'm a little busy. 
We got our Christmas going on. We're opening gifts. I spent a lot of money at Toys R Us, and my kids better be happy in Jesus' name. They better enjoy those toys, and they better watch them and use them as much as they can type of thing because I worked hard for those toys. But listen, mighty God, put it on pause because we've got our thing going on here. Think about this everlasting Father. Isaiah makes this verse announcement on Shutterfly 700 years before that, and he says that the everlasting Father would step into this world. And yet I ask myself the question, and maybe dads, we could ask ourselves the question tonight. Traditionally, when Joseph and Mary would have knocked on their family's door, it would have never been a lady that would have gone to the door. In Jewish tradition, the man would have gone to the door. The man would have made the decision of the house. And I thought, man, how many times as dads, how many times as dads are we not making room for what God wants to do in our life? And I had to ask myself that same question that in 2016, in my family's life, 2016, where I'm going, 2016, what God is doing in my eight-year-old's life and my five-year-old's life and my, you know, 11-month-old, am I willing as the dad, as the man to make room for the everlasting father? Or do I have my own agenda? Do I have my own goals? Do I have my own visions? Just think about it. We're going on a trip tomorrow. And so it was agenda today. Kids, we're going to get up at 8.30. Kids, we're going to open gifts. Kids, we're going to get the gifts in the trash because the garbage has to be taken out because nothing can stink while we're gone for the next few days. I mean, there was an agenda that was going on. There was no space. There was no room for the everlasting Father. And yet, for me tonight... And every single Christmas Eve, I've got to take a moment to grieve because this is my eight years, eight year anniversary of my dad's passing. That eight years ago, as I was in Walgreens with a gallon of milk, a call came in from Mozambique, Africa, that my dad had died. And so when I read this, I go, I need an everlasting father in my life. I need a father to speak into me and give me guidance and give me direction. And so the question that I've got to ask myself, and regardless of your age tonight, but are you, am I willing to make room for God? Am I willing to make room for what God is doing? Because the father of that house, think about it, the father of that house made a decision that the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father, the mighty God, the wonderful counselor would have no access to his house and that they would have him be born in a feeding trough next door to the house. Wouldn't you have regretted that decision to say, oops, that was a bad one. We should have invited him. My prayer is that in the Christmas Eve of 2016, we're not saying oops, that we've made room for what God is doing in our life. Think about this. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says, The Prince of Peace. I wrote this down. With a cow and some cow stuff next to you. The Prince of Peace. Think about it. The Prince of Peace born in a feeding trough with some cow poop sitting next door. That's not very peaceful. That's not, you know, the the aroma is not very good. And yet the Prince of Peace, the one that gives you and I everlasting peace, was not born in a peaceful situation. And as I was thinking and reading through this and asking myself the question, does Brendan have room for what God is doing? I thought about this in the anxiousness of this season, in the anxiousness of my father's passing eight years ago, in the anxiousness of everything that's going on, in the go, go, go of this lifestyle. I mean, today I was running out of the church over here, and I, I, I looked at, uh, you know, New Road, Route 9 over here, and I said, those people are crazy on that street. I walked back into the church. I said, I'm not going on that street over there. People are crazy on that street. I mean, I know when the parking, when, when, the, when the cars are all the way down over here, it's crazy. I mean, shop, the The crazy people came out at ShopRite today, I think, you know? And and so there was no peace. And I said, God, in 2016, would Brendan have the ability to make room for peace? I thought about this. How many times have we missed Jesus because we did not make room? I mean, we're about to kind of go into this last song in just a few moments. But the question is, how many times this year have I missed Jesus because I've made no room. I- imagine that he's knocking on my door and yet my phone is in my back pocket and it's vibrating. I'm like, who liked me on Instagram? You know, who sent me a message on Facebook? Who's calling me right now? 
You know, oh, it's a number I don't know. But, you know, your fear of missing out. I don't know the number, but hello, how are you? You know, type of a thing. And, and, and did I miss God because of the anxiety? Did I miss God because I didn't give Him a chance in my life? Did I miss God because I was agenda driven? This is what I was going to do with my family. This is where we were going to go. And this is how we were going to do it. Did I miss God because I was so fixated on the things of this world? And can I beg some of us tonight that the number one goal that we should have in 2016 is simply to say, God, I want to give you some room. Wonderful counselor, because I don't need to be distracted. How many of us in a relationship tonight say, could say, I need a good counselor. I, I need some help. I need some direction. I want to be better in my marriage. I want to be a better dad. How many dads want to be a better dad in this place tonight? Come on. May everyone uh, of us that are dads should have our hand up. How many mothers, you want to be a better mom in this place, that you need the wonderful counselor to download on you? How many of us, if we're walking with Jesus, we want to have a closer relationship with Jesus Christ? Uh, of course. How many of us need a miracle in this place? Like we need the mighty God to step into this. Just, so the rest of you don't need a miracle all the way over here? I mean, I, I don't know about that, but I need a lot of, mer and, and you know, have you ever been there? Like, God, if you don't come through, I'm in some serious trouble, you know. I need a miracle. I need mighty God to step in. Get out of the feeding trough and bring a miracle into my life. That's the way I feel tonight. So, God, do I need to make room? I'm going to make as much room as I can in my life because I need a miracle in 2016. Prince of Peace, God, how much room do I need to make you to get some peace in my life? Because there are some people in my life, they're acting crazy. I'm, I'm being honest about this, okay? They're acting crazy. Anyone else got some crazy folk in your life? You're just, the rest of you didn't lift your hand. You are the crazy folk. I mean, come on, let's be honest. The other night I was dealing with a situation. My wife was right, right there and she was broken hearted for the situation I was going through with a family member. I said, are you kidding me? I need the Prince of Peace to come in and step in, but I've got to make room for him. I've got to quieten myself. I've got to disconnect myself. As we close in this song, as we turn into 2016, the question I want to ask you is, do you have room? Do you have room for what God is doing? And just in this room is, they begin to bring down the lights. There are times in our life that it's dark. It's the same representation that we used on Sunday. But in the darkness of this room, there's always the light of Jesus. In the darkness of this room, God is always working. As the lights are going, that, that, that we would ask ourselves, God, what are you up to? What are you doing in this place? What's, what's the question that's going on? What's the anxiety that's going on? What's the peace that you need? What's the mighty God that you need? What's the everlasting Father that you need? So as this candle is lit, and as we sing in this last song called Noel, would we consider making room for what God wants to do in 2016? Okay, so real quick, can we, can we do a quick disclaimer? Before? Let's do this. There's a lot of people in this room. because I know there's a lot of people in the cafe. So the kids have glow sticks on purpose. <laughs> Parents, please don't burn your child. I beg you. Even if they're misbehaving. Okay. So this is a great opportunity. I didn't grow up a lot around church, but when I did go to candlelight services, they were incredible. But at the same time, let's do this well. But as I look at this, and I ask myself the question, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, that I would need every one of those things in my life. I don't know about you today, but as you would receive this candle or maybe your child would break that glow stick next to them, as they continue to bring the lights down, would you just simply ask yourself the question, God, could you be that within my life? Could you be that 
everlasting Father, could you be that Prince of Peace? Could I make room for what you're doing? And God, I know the struggle. God, I know the distraction. But I'm the partner with someone. I'm gonna walk over to someone and I'm gonna say, could you join me in 2016? Could you hold me accountable to deal with my anxiety? Could you hold me accountable to dealing with my father wounds? Could you hold me accountable to making more room for God that when I get distracted, you would simply ask me? Because I believe that as we would come together as a church, that God could do so much greater than we've ever imagined within our life. Simply by asking someone to draw alongside of us, simply by asking someone to come and help me. Simply by someone challenging me to say, would you make room? Would you make room for what God is doing in your life? Would you make room for that everlasting love, the Prince of Peace? Maybe that's that person drawing alongside of you and saying, hey, let him carry that burden in 2016. Let, let him allow that miracle to happen in 2016. Let God step in and maybe you step out. That as we would sing the song, as you would hold that candle, if your candle's lit, let's go ahead and stand together. But would you make this song a prayer to your life? Would you make this song a cry of your heart of what Christ can do?